most commonly said thing when people come into these rooms is they go, this is so obvious. Why didn't somebody do this before? Actually, I think I'm quite a conventional person, but it's other people that say that I'm a maverick entrepreneur, so I guess I have to hold my hands up and say, okay. Um, I was, I think, you know, people are interested in me because um, I got to the age of 40, and when I was a kid growing up, I was going to be a millionaire by the time I was 20. And then I was having a good time, you know, doing all the things we did in those days. And I thought, I'll put off being a millionaire till I'm 30, went through my 30s, and then got to 40 and thought, I've completely forgotten to be a millionaire. The big thing is the windows, instead of facing outside, face onto the corridor. Mm -hmm. And that is the really big quantum leap, because we were, were here at Heathrow Airport inside the terminal itself, and you couldn't do that with a conventional hotel. We have a flat screen, we've got the internet, the table comes up, there's a place to work. Um, everything you need, everything that you get in a luxury hotel, the power shower, um, all the luxury bits, everything you get in a luxury hotel, in, a, in 10 square meters this room is. Actually, what we sell here is sleep. Mm -hmm. Very, very good cotton, really good quality, very good mattresses, quiet, air-conditioned, your own loo. Mm -hmm. That's what you need. You can do a lot of things here. You can buy food here, you can watch TV, but most people want to come here, pull the blind down, turn out the lights, and go to sleep. I looked around for other things that could be called yo, and um, I looked at Japanese capsule hotels, and I thought there's nobody's going to want to stay in those. And I just spent hours and days and months and weeks, you know, trying to figure out how to do luxury in a small space. I call it the quantum leap. You know, the in the 21st century in retail, what everybody wants is good prices and what rich people have. And if you can give what rich people have at good prices, you've got a magical formula. And I was actually go, coming back from Kuwait, and I was lucky enough to be upgraded to British Airways first class on the flatbed seats in the aeroplanes. And um, I remember waking up and thinking, this is how we should make this look. And they do look a bit like the interior of first class of an aeroplane. <laughs> But I'd never really planned, Jared Green and my partner and I, I'd never really planned to do hotel, uh, you know, airports and the hotels in the airports. We'd always planned to do them in city centres. But this came up, and it was one of the first times we realised, because these rooms, we don't sell just by the night. We sell them by the block of hours. So we say here, you know, the best hoteliers in the world, they say we got to 98% occupancy this year. And we go, well, actually... Uh, we're about 180% occupancy and we're going to try and get over 250% occupancy, which means that we sell more than, this room gets sold more than two times a day. First of all, if I'd done market research, if I said to you, would you like to sleep in a seven square metre room with no natural light? You'd have gone, no way, Jose. You know, you can't market research a market that doesn't exist. And also, when you're doing something new, you, for everybody from the builders and the designers, there's a million headaches to try and convince people to see it your way. You know, once you can see it a different way, that's, what, that's why creativity and innovation is often done by entrepreneurs and not by big companies. Now, how do I convince other people it's obvious? You know, most people would say you write a 20-page document and you do research. It doesn't work. Everybody knows that. You know, on the front of my business plan, it says, if you want to make God laugh, show him your business plan. And people said to me, you can't give that to the bank. I said, when I showed the bank, they laughed. They said, you're dead right. So what we did with these, actually, is we built prototypes mm -hmm. of them, full-size prototypes, 
and we exhibited them at design exhibitions. And everybody who came in said, this is amazing. We were on the national news. We were in all the newspapers, architectural journeys. Suddenly, people are talking about it and they're saying, oh, how many have you got? They've got them all over the world. We hadn't even built a single one. Then people believe it, boom, better than a business plan. We have a thing within our organisation called mm -hmm. Can I, and it stands for constant and never-ending innovation. And here we're sitting in the premium room. Next door here, we've got the standard rooms. Later, we're doing economy rooms. When we go to America, we're doing suites. You know, like uh, you have limos, stretch limos. Well, you take it like a mini and stretch the mini. We'll have suites. They'll still be smaller than anybody else's rooms, but we'll call them suites. People are like, oh, I'm going to stay in a suite tonight. <laughs> I think that's right. I think it, that's a, it's a great formula to bring to everybody what rich people have. Here you can go to different states of lighting. Here, I don't know if it's show, show up on the camera here. Here we go. It's bedtime. Good night. Good night. We're all going to bed.